Hi everybody, thanks for being here. You know, I've been thinking I've got this channel and people are watching the videos, which I really appreciate. But I was thinking, why do I watch other channels? Why do I subscribe to channels? And actually there's a little story, a little YouTube background story for me. So when I turned 50, I said to my then teenage daughter, I said, I don't know if I'm dressing the way I should be now that I'm 50 or I'm applying my makeup the way I should be now that I'm 50. I have wrinkles now. You know, I don't want to dress like you. Not that there's anything wrong with the way she dressed, but she was a teenager. So she said, well, why don't you look at YouTube? And I had always thought, well, isn't YouTube like contractor showing you how to do stuff around your house, which has been useful and I've tapped into it for that. Um, and a bunch of like young people doing pranks or people like doing gaming videos and there's certainly a place for all of that and that's what my daughter mainly watched. So in my head, that's what YouTube was. And so she said, well, why don't we do a search on YouTube? And I said, you think they'll have that? She said, of course. So she did a search for like fashion over 50 or something like that and found a channel called Style at a Certain Age, which I love, still watch it. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is great. I bet there are a lot of channels for people like me. So then I found one for applying makeup for middle-aged and older women called Hot and Flashy. Love her channel, she's great. Her name is Angie. And I thought, oh, this is pretty cool. So fast forward, and those are pretty much the only ones I watch. And then fast forward to, I wanna say maybe around COVID time, a little bit before COVID time, I started finding like these lifestyle channels. Like I found Farmhouse on Boone, who is fantastic. And um, I found Inspired by Nikki. And I found, and I love her. And I found, Jennifer L. Scott's channel, The da uh, Daily Connoisseur. Love her. And what I noticed was that I continued going back to these people's channels because I was really engaging with who they were, their lives, their families, um, their households in general. And of course they do projects. And you know, I thought, well, that's what I'll do then. I'll do a bunch of projects. But I think the piece of it that I left out is the personal piece of it. And I think in my quest for privacy and safety, frankly, I just was not gonna put out personal information. So I was thinking, you know, my channel, it's okay. I show a lot of gardening stuff and home things, but I don't know that I'm really engaging with all of you. So I thought I'm gonna have to just tell you who I am. So my name is Heather and um, my kind of speed dating, which I don't do, by the way, bio would be um, I'm divorced, I'm in my mid 50s, I have a full time job, so I film on evenings and weekends, which is today, it's Saturday afternoon. Um, I have one child who is in college, I have two cats. And that would be my kind of elevator <laughs> speech on who I am. Um, I have siblings around the country. Both of my parents are sadly deceased, but my step-parents are still with us, which I'm eternally grateful for. So let's talk about my house. I live on the east coast of the United States in the mid-Atlantic region. Um, which is great, it's really temperate. I've lived in New England and Connecticut. I've lived in the Midwest, um, in Michigan, Southeastern Michigan, which is where I'm originally from. I've lived in Phoenix, which um, I, I love. I have family, immediate family there still, and I love to go back and visit every year. It's a bit hot. I don't know that I could live there year round anymore. I don't know that I can take that kind of heat. So I'm in the mid-Atlantic of the US and I have my own home. I've owned five other homes in the past as a married person, uh, but this is the first time I have owned a home on my own, and it's kind of cool. I have to say, it was a little daunting, but it's kind of cool. And let's see, oh, so 
When I was shopping for this house, the real estate market was and remains extremely competitive. Definitely not enough houses for the people looking for houses. So I put in offers on other houses. Well, actually, wait a minute. I looked at this house. I think this was the second house I looked at. And it was just pretty rough. I mean, every inch of it needed painting. There was just a lot going on with this house. Terrible kitchen. No basement, but a shed and an attic. So, you know, it had good bones, but not much to recommend it beyond that. So I looked at a bunch of other houses and put in some offers on some of them, even went in above asking on some of them and was outbid constantly. And it was really frustrating. And I was in an apartment and that lease was coming due and the apartment had flooded. There was like mold growing up the walls and the carpet was moldy and like you stepped on it and it splashed, it was disgusting. I wanted out of there. So time was ticking on and it was towards the, you know, it was getting on in the summer and I was like, oh my gosh, nothing was coming on the market. So I said to my realtor, let's revisit that house we looked at way long ago and it was still on the market, no surprise. <laughs> and I ended up getting it. So that's the good news. I've done a lot of cosmetic work on it since. I still have plenty more to do, which is another reason why I'm doing a channel. I figure I'm not the only middle-aged, empty nester, single woman with a house that needs help on a very tight budget. So, hence the channel. So here I am, I've been here, I guess four years now. Um, I'm ashamed to say because there are still too many projects left undone. I've certainly done a lot, but uh, there's a lot to do. I will attach a link to my house tour video that I did. I'll link that in the description box so you can get the full tour. And I also talk about projects to do and projects that have been done. So you can kind of get a feel for where I am with things. Again, I'm thinking I can't be the only person in this situation. So, so about that only child of mine. She is in college. She'll be starting her junior year in a couple of weeks. I'll have to drive her down. She's a few states away. Um, she is an artist. She's incredibly creative. I'll throw some pictures in here so you can see some of her work. Um, she wants to be a character designer and I think she'll be very successful in that industry. She is just a font of creativity and ideas and just can't stop drawing. She is incredibly kind and generous. She loves to like make me breakfast and she puts my bento box lunches together for me every day when I have to go into the office. It's so cute, she loves it. She's like, she says it gives her summer purpose, which is so sweet. And she's obsessed with charcuterie boards. She made her first charcuterie board, actually kind of two, one for like bread and crackers and the other for the cheese and meats and fruit and whatnot. She did that this summer and she was so proud and it was delicious. And she's really funny. Like I laugh so hard with her that I have tears. Like I laugh so hard that no sound even comes out. And then when it does, I start snorting. She is hysterical and she's goofy. She'll like put ridiculous things on just to get a laugh. I'll throw up some pictures of that here. Uh, these are older pictures when she was, I think, in middle school or high school. Anyway, she's she's awesome. She's my favorite person on the planet. So, pets. I always have pets. I just love animals. So, going back, because there's a backstory to this. So, I currently have Basil, who is seven. She's a great tiger. And I have Clover. Clover just turned one, and she's a Tortico, I think is the term, she's like a calico torty. And she is a maniac. Uh, they're both rescues. Prior to them, I had two ragdolls whom I loved so much. They lived a nice long, long lives. I really missed the ragdolls. And while the, when the ragdolls were like, their names were Abby and Zoe. When the ragdolls were, I wanna say, four-ish maybe. We got a puppy when my daughter was three 
and she was a little cockapoo, and her name was Lady, because my daughter at the time was obsessed with the movie Lady and the Tramp. So I said, what would you like to name her, Chloe or Lady? And of course my daughter said, Lady, Lady! So we had Lady, and Lady lived um, until she was 17. She's been away from us now for a few months, and we really miss her. She was such a sweet baby. But Basil, Basil and her littermate Bailey were adopted by us as kittens after my two rag dolls, Abby and Zoe, had to be put down. And Basil came into the household, not only with her sister Bailey, but with Lady. And she loved being part of this animal family in the house. So Bailey got really sick. She was the runt of the litter and she had heart problems and autoimmune disease and she had severe kidney disease. And sadly, about this time last year, I had to put her down and it was just gut-wrenching. So poor Basil lost her sister and Lady was really old. She was 16, she was blind and deaf, she had gotten quite thin, she was just elderly, um, but so happy. She knew her way around the house. Like I told my daughter, I said, we can't move anything in the house because she knows her route to the back door to go out. You can't move anything. So we adopted another kitten named Clover. And I didn't want Basil to be an only pet in the house because I didn't have a good feeling about Lady's longevity anymore. She was getting quite old and feeble. So we got Clover <laughs> and she was a total maniac. She still is. She'd like climb curtains, she'd hurl herself around, she'd jump on Basil's back and Basil was had such a good attitude. Like she would kind of reprimand her a little bit but would never harm Clover. She would never like smash her or anything or scratch her across the face. So that's where I am with pets right now. So the garden. So when I moved into the house, there was no landscaping. The front and backyards were mostly weeds. There were like little patches of grass here and there, but it was really weedy or there was just nothing. And the fencing was green with algae. It was disgusting. It, like the long piece of fencing that goes down the length of the entire yard. It was so gross. And Around my shed, there was a hydrangea planted, which is still there and I, it's alive. And that was it. Like, there was just nothing. And as someone who has been gardening for, you know, 20, 30 years, I thought, ooh, I have to do something here. So I hand dug with like one of those hand edgers. I hand dug out three garden beds in the back. I moved a bunch of bricks from the front into the back to outline the garden beds with. Then I redid the whole front area, which I have refreshed again. That's another video I will link below in case you haven't seen it. Um, I actually used some leftover bricks to outline that front area. So my gardening journey, I put in a bunch of perennials and I kind of intersperse annuals in there here and there. And it was doing great the first couple years. This year, kind of not so great. Like, I don't know if it was all the smoke we got from the wildfires. Um, we had like a month with very little to no rain, which was kind of nice because I didn't have to mow. Um, and then when we got rain, it was just like torrential nonstop. So I don't know exactly what the culprit is. It could be a combination of the factors. And I'm noticing so many webs in the garden this year. I don't. I don't know what's going on, but it's not looking great right now. So that is a big part of my channel um, because I love gardening and I know that a ton of people do as well. I am not a master gardener. I make a lot of mistakes. Um, some things I know because I've been doing it so long and I know certain things, how far down you can prune them and all that kind of stuff. So I go through that on the channel as well. But I hope that you'll follow along and get inspired to start a garden of your own if you don't have one or just some little tips here and there. It's so great if we all collaborate and share information on our gardens. 
Some of the things I enjoy doing um, are dancing ballet, which I need to get back into. I moved to New York City in my early 20s actually to study ballet. And it's just something I love. I love to watch it. I love to dance. Another thing that I love to do is play the piano. My mother was a vocal music teacher and a very good pianist, and she used to teach piano lessons in our house when I was little. And when I was five, I begged her to teach me how, so she taught me how to play the right hand and how to play the left hand and taught me to sight read and kind of left me to my own devices. And anytime I had a question, I would say, Mom, what is this note? Or what is this key signature? Well, how many flats am I doing here? Which ones? And but that's just been a love of mine. I don't perform. I get really self-conscious about it, but I just love to play, just, just to hear the music. Another thing I like to do is to read. If you watch my home tour video, you'll see my books on one of the bookshelves. And I used to have so many more books, but I did donate a whole lot of them. When we moved from state to state, it just got really heavy and uh, it was time to part with some of them. I'm also kind of um, a magazine junkie. I love shelter magazines. I've cut way back on my subscriptions because it just gets costly. And I love decorating. I wish I had gone to design school when I was young. I would have loved to have been a professional decorator. I am not saying that my house is anything you would see in a magazine. It's pretty eclectic. But I just love color and decorating with flowers and things that are meaningful, whether I've traveled somewhere or somebody special to me gave me something. Uh, so I really enjoy decorating a lot. So thanks for sticking with me this long. I'm a little bashful talking about myself. I think a lot of people are. It's something I'll have to get used to. So plans for my channel. I want to start working in some vlogs, some, you know, spend the day with me, videos. I really enjoy watching other people's videos and clean with me and shop with me. And I also have a series planned. I'll start that in January. Friends, thank you again for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button so we can grow the channel and get a nice community going. That's another thing I notice about the channels I watch. You start recognizing people in the comment section and and you support each other. It can be a beautiful thing. And it's really neat also to watch people's channels who live in other countries. So thanks again for watching and let's build that community together. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.